welcome to Horror Movie Madness Marathon Month. This time, I'm going to be reviewing a werewolf movie, Ginger Snaps. Released in 2000, it was directed by John Fawcett. It's about two sisters, Emily Perkins as Bridget and Catherine Isabel as her older sister Ginger. They're a pretty morbid pair and don't fit in too well in the typical suburban neighborhood they live called Bailey Downs. The sisters are obsessed with death in the macabre. One of their favorite things to do is take photos of themselves in staged death scenes, and they even have a suicide pact to die together if they don't get out of the suburb. As you can imagine, they're not the most popular girls and are generally considered freaks by their peers. One girl in particular, named Trina, really doesn't like them and is sort of a bully. She's kind of the typical stuck-up popular girl, and one day, while playing field hockey at school, she purposely slams into Bridget and knocks her over onto a dead dog. So it seems that there's some sort of beast in the town that has been killing dogs and somehow one of the mutilated pups wound up on the field. To get back at Trina, the sisters decide to kidnap her dog to scare her. The plan seems to be to use some fake gore from their photo shoots to try and make it look like another beast attack. That night, while on the way to nab the dog, they cross through a playground and stumble upon the dog there, dead and mutilated. They decide to make use of the body for their original plan, but are interrupted as Ginger gets her first period. Right after, they get attacked by a werewolf, although they don't know what it is at the time, and Ginger gets mauled pretty badly. The girls manage to get away, run across a road, and the werewolf gets hit by a van driven by a drug dealer named Sam. Ginger got pretty tore up in the attack, but she begins to heal very quickly. Soon after, she begins to change, sprouting a tail, growing hairier, and getting aggressive. Her whole attitude changes, and she really starts behaving differently, no longer interested in spending time with her sister. She kills a neighbor's dog, beats the crap out of Trina, and has sex with a classmate. Because of all this, Bridget begins hanging out with Sam, and they determine that her sister is transforming into a werewolf. It's up to them to figure out a cure and try to save Ginger. This was my first time seeing Ginger Snaps, and I thought it was a pretty good movie. I enjoyed watching it, and I felt it was interesting how they took two subjects that normally wouldn't be associated with each other and overlapped them, and it actually parallels quite well. The subjects being adolescence and becoming a werewolf. In both cases, your body begins to change, and you begin to feel urges and emotions that you never experienced before. Ginger just happens to have her first period right before the werewolf shows up and bites her, so she's basically going through both changes simultaneously, transforming into a woman and also a monster. On the flip side, Bridget hasn't had her period yet, nor was she bitten by a werewolf, so we have an instance of two sisters who previously were each other's best companion and who were very much alike and now one of them is changing into something different while the other remains the same, and this starts to create a rift between them. As I mentioned, Bridget is played by Emily Perkins, and when I first saw her, I knew I recognized her from something else, but I couldn't quite put my finger on it. But then I remembered, oh yeah, she's Becky in Supernatural. <laughs> you know, the super fan who's really into the book series, dates God, and writes incestuous homoerotic fanfiction about Sam and Dean. Apparently, she was also in the original TV miniseries, It, in 1990. The reason why I recognized her so obviously from Supernatural is because recently I finished watching all 15 seasons of the show. Interestingly enough, Catherine Isabel was also in Supernatural, although only for a few episodes in Season 2. She was also in one episode of Stargate SG-1. You know, it's funny how many actors appeared on Supernatural that were also on Stargate SG-1. But I digress. The effects in the movie were pretty good, especially toward the end when Ginger goes full-on werewolf. We don't get a good look at a werewolf until that point, and I think the payoff is nice. It's a pretty good-looking creature and has a well-animated face. The gore isn't ridiculously excessive throughout the film, but there's enough of it and I like that it isn't oversaturated. It's used pretty appropriately, but there's still a decent amount. A lot of the horror results from what you don't see. For example, toward the end of the movie, Bridget and Sam are hiding in a pantry from Ginger after they've brought her back to their house. At this point, she's fully transitioning into a werewolf and they're attempting to brew some serum to cure her. Sam goes out to try and inject her and she catches him. 
We don't really see him being attacked directly, but rather from Bridget's point of view in the pantry, and it sounds awful. I mean, it really sounds violent, and we can only imagine what it's like on the other side of that door. Eventually, we do get to see what it is, and it's as bloody as you'd think. That's one of my favorite parts of the film, and I found it really disturbing. So, overall, I thought it was a great movie, and I'd recommend it if you haven't seen it. It has an interesting story with a theme based around metamorphosis and makes for a good horror film, especially if you're looking for a werewolf flick. So, check it out and come back again and join me for more movie reviews as I continue Horror Movie Madness Marathon Month. Happy Halloween!